We're live. Ready, let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> Just trying to get a little bit of a nap in between the uh, long days, you know. We do long days here at the Walam Kung Fu System. So, uh, okay, welcome to 40 Fit Fu. This is our episode two. You know what I like about that? Is that it rhymed? So, um, we're going to talk a little bit about recovery. And this is important. Which is why we were taking a nap earlier, right. because we were recovering. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, which gets actually to be more important as uh, you get a little bit older. I like to just note one other thing is we did not coordinate gray shirts. It just happened. <laughs> it's mind melt. Okay. Um, all right, so <laughs> here's what happens is... Um, uh, there is a time in your life, if you were active at around 18, 19, that's around when I started getting active, um, that you're just able to put your body through a lot. You're able to put your body through a lot, and then you wake up the next day, and you're able to do it again. And um, that does not happen, that does not happen when you turn 40, okay? You need to have a little bit of a plan of how to recover when you are doing something like, let's say, like Kung Fu, or especially like Walam Kung Fu, which has a lot of impact on certain joints of the body, so you have to do certain things to do that. So we want to talk a little bit today about what are some strategies that you can do. Do you have any thoughts to add to this? No, I think you're doing fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm out Well, of here. for example, uh, today is Tuesday, and so that means last night was our Kung Fu Advanced class, and so um, basically that traditionally means that we kind of put ourselves a little bit through the ringer. It's our, our, our traditional basics night, so I like to do, you know, the traditional 15 minutes or so by foot sao and really get um, everybody kind of into that wallum mindset. And so I go straight through any of you uh, wallum students out there have your notebook, you can open it up to the basics page and I pretty much do exactly what's on that basics page. And, but we do it for about 45 minutes, I would say. So it's a pretty intense basics class. So it's a very simple class, but um, not easy. Simple but not easy. And so Tuesday is traditionally the day that I tell all of my students, um, great news, tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and I'm going to be the first thought on your mind. <laughs> yes. Uh, because uh, usually, you know, you could be a little bit sore, maybe slightly more fatigued than other days because it is kind of an intense class. And so we do want to talk about recovery because we've noticed as time has gone on, because I like to keep up with those youngins in the class, and so we've noticed as time goes on that the recovery process is a little bit slower, right? And so we wanted to talk today about recovery, especially for those of you that do Walam, um, and what would be really beneficial for you. So uh, you saw us earlier uh, when we opened the podcast and we were pretty much sleeping, so that's probably the first thing is to make sure you're getting proper sleep. Yeah, definitely make sure that you get pl plenty of sleep. But you know what? Let's take it one step further. Why it's important to think about recovery. Um, there are certain types of people who do martial arts, and a lot of them are, not a lot of them, but well, not most of them, but a lot of them are type A personalities. So when you say to someone like that, hey, you need to think about rest and recovery, some of them are like, oh, I'm not, that's not my style. I, I'm kind of a go, go, go type person. So what you need to think of is put yourself in the mindset of, that um, rec recovery doesn't take away from anything. It's almost like you're multiply it's a multiplying thing. So what recovery does is it adds to your martial arts training. And what some people start thinking of when they think of rest and recovery is, well, how, how am I gonna get, how am I gonna fit this into my schedule? Well, if you want to improve, you need to put it into it. So that's kind of like a big reason of why you wanna do it, is that it's going to make everything else better. Um, and uh, so one way, yes, is definitely getting uh, more sleep and studies show like anywhere between seven to nine hours. I'm going to admit that that doesn't always happen for me. Today, I only got, or last night, I only got six hours of sleep and I'm feeling it. And um, a big thing that happens is if you don't get enough sleep, let's say you multiply three to five days of like just six hours or so of sleep, by the end of that, it's almost accumulation of about what 24 hours of sleep losses and that starts showing itself in similar attributes to like when you're drunk um, thoughts you know like my brain isn't working firing as, as well as it should <laughs> and also you crave more like sugary things so it also affects your diet 
So that's that's one of the things that I have. Okay. Um, we're getting feedback from f- oh, fix my for, feed. from viewers that you need to fix your feed, son. <laughs> yeah, <I need laughs> but it's kind of weird. My camera's the same way, so I'm not sure what's going on. But if, for those of you who didn't tune in last week, uh, basically this is a weekly uh, Facebook live stream that we're going to do for like 10 to 15 minutes. So if you have questions about the topic we're uh, discussing, uh, you can actually join on my page as well as Control Your Health and you know, hit us up on both sides. By the I way. don't know how to fix my feed. There can be a whole <laughs> so, series of podcasts about technology. So pretty technology. much, if you're on the Control Your Health feed, basically you're going to get a little neck mobility today and you're just going to turn to the side. So you're just going to like lean into it. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, um, the other part I wanted to talk about recovery because for me, I've noticed that if I am not drinking enough water, if I'm eating a little bit, you know, too much comfort food, it does affect my recovery. And so um, those two factors, of course, are something that kind of plays into your everyday. But I also find that kind of what we talked about a little bit last week was the warm up and cool down. So in terms of warming up and cooling down, if you actually do that, you know, take a little bit more time and do that um, for your workout. You do kind of that warm up and that cool down, you will actually recover faster. So, um, and you know, again, the main goal is for all you Walam Kung Fu guys or any martial artist or, or sports athletes for you to get out there and actually do what you love to do, but safely without injury and so that you can feel really good and not like have to, to just skip class for four or five days. We want you to be able to come back every day. Exactly right. So um, I got this uh, feedback <laughs> that my uh, the image was like sideways for the first few minutes. So you know, I'm not technologically inclined. It's not my specialty. I'm more of like a, fitness is my thing. So let's, <laughs> let's just stick with that. That eating good food and reading comic books like my friend Pete. You know, that's the, that's my oh and shameless thing. plug in a couple weeks. Uh, Pete, who is watching and commenting right now and, and giving us some love um you know pretty much he'll be on my other podcast culture chat so if you haven't tuned in there i'm gonna just shamelessly plug that nice. we are really geeking out so those of you who like comics please please tune in but in terms of fitness i also talk a lot about that on my podcast as well so you can check yep. it out yeah so okay a couple things a couple of ways to think about uh recovery one sleep we got that covered now the thing about it is is let's say you can average um, seven to nine hours of sleep uh, in a single night then how can you find how can you find um, that extra time throughout the day and I am a big proponent of naps not long drawn-out naps but basically what I like to do is um, set a timer on my phone I put it on airplane mode and I set it for 10 15 20 minutes it depends on how much time I have but I'm even okay with a five-minute nap like you've seen me come in um, after uh, my early morning session, have something to eat, and then you're, you're telling us, okay, we gotta get ready to, for our nighttime classes. And I'm like, all right, just give me five minutes. I'm just gonna lay down, close my eyes. The intention is not that I wanna fall asleep. The intention is that I just wanna recover. And so I wanna breathe and sleep. So whatever time you have, I think everyone can find five, 10, 15, 20, 20 minutes throughout the day, even if it's one time, and it will make a big difference because all you're doing is giving your time a little bit, your brain a little bit of time to reset and recharge the same way that every once in a while your phone starts acting up and you need to kind of reset it, right? Hit, hit the reset button. Um, and you wanna almost think of it like, uh, we've got all these lights on here, right? Um, every once in a while you gotta turn off the lights. Yes, they could, we could leave them on for a long time, but the, the, the life of that light is not gonna last as long if we don't shut it off every once in a while. So that's just one of the ways to think about it. One is how can you get, get a little bit more sleep? You talked about water, staying hydrated is super important. And then I think I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about something that you've been practicing um, for the past, I don't know, year, two years, or some meditation. Yep, so, absolutely. Yeah. So a big part of my recovery is an act, it's actually, what do you call it when you do prehab? It's like before, right? Like, so it's like pre-recovery. And so something that I find have found really beneficial is meditation. And I'm not talking about, you know, sitting there in lotus position for 45 minutes to an hour. I am nowhere near that level of, 
of um, you know uh, of that plane <laughs> of of um, being able to kind of disconnect and relax. I just find about five minutes because I actually am not really big on naps. I don't nap well. It takes me you know in order to actually shut down. It, it's it's a bit of a, a problem for me, and so I actually think it's almost one in the same. So for me, my meditation actually sounded a lot like what Oscar just described in you know kind of just shutting down and kind of taking that time to just like breathe and not really um, stress out and hyper focus on things so I pretty much do a daily meditation I try to set my timer for at least five minutes um, and if you if you're sitting there going nope that's not for me I don't meditate just set it for 30 seconds yeah. you know just try 30 seconds and you don't have to sit there and pretend to clear your mind or anything I think you just focus in on your breathing and you'd be surprised how much longer that you are actually sitting there than um, you would have guessed you would and in addition how much better you'll feel after and that's just kind of like giving yourself like five minutes break so I almost call it like time out or something you know right. like it's just taking time for yourself uh, and the fact that there was a point in my life where I was so overwhelmed I couldn't take five minutes for myself was a bit of a problem and so taking that five minutes as kind of pre-recovery will actually set you up for success when it comes to being a better practitioner especially for walam kung fu and kung fu and or any martial art that any of you are doing because it is so so involved and again as we've gotten a little older i know we're still youthful and young and hip and, and, <laughs> and we <laughs> and, look young and we're super cool yeah we are but really we but, are um, 40. yeah not spring not yeah. so spring chicken bones is what i put in this in this tag and so because of that i think having all of these tools at your disposal and knowing they're there and just remembering that they are there um is what's really important you don't have to do them every day you just have to do the best you can but know that you have a toolbox and when you're ready to pull these different tools out yeah. they're they're up they're all they're really there for you and they will be really effective so right and i think so so yeah meditation is a great one there's a ton of ways to do it there's no i don't think there's any wrong way to do it um just the practice of you trying to focus on just your breath or whatever it is there's no wrong way to do it just practice that another option i think for recovery is something that we like to call active recovery. So um, even the simple fact of like, if you're the type of person who's like, no, I've got to do something. Well, how about you work on some mobility training or some stretching? Um, and I think that's something that can definitely um, help you for your recovery. So I'll give you another thing. One, is, one of the things that I, I mentioned is yes, I try to get like a five hour power, five minute power, <laughs> not five, a five minute power nap um, if, I, if, I don't, um, if I don't get enough sleep. But another thing that I try to do at least one time a day is take every one of my joints, like my wrist joint or my elbow joint or my neck joint, through its full range of motion for about two or three reps. Mm -hmm. No matter how busy the day is, no matter how crazy it is, at least one time a day I try to do that. And the way I think about that is um, not just as a recovery, but as an assessment. So I'm able to assess like, Oh, my neck's a little bit jacked up. I was able to do a full neck circle the other, um, yesterday, but I can't today. You can do that with your knee, with anything. So um, that's another way to go about it, thinking of your recovery is a, as a way of you prepping for your next training session. Absolutely. So. And I do want to just send out shout outs to those who are actually tuning in live. Yeah, so Pete, hi, Chad. Chad. Pete. Flavia. <laughs> Flavia. Wow, from Oi, club. como vai? You know, so um, thank you guys for tuning in. We do appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, everything pretty much that you just said, I think is pretty useful for recovery. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also just kind of like giving yourself a little bit of that love and like don't uh, overthink it, you know, and don't think you can't eat what you want to eat or, you know, take the time for yourself. Just like kind of be able to kind of let go of all of that and um, you'll feel much better. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, since um, my friend Chad, Dr. Chad is watching, I, I will mention another way to think about uh, your active recovery, or let's say you're recovering from an injury, is to as often as possible go through pain-free ranges of motion. So he would agree with me, I know, that if you are recovering from an injury, the worst thing you can do is not move at all. Absolutely. The best thing you can do is try to find how can you do pain-free movement as often as you can. Um, and um, I will say for Kung Fu practitioners, martial arts, Wallen people, there's a lot of stubborn people out there. So that needs to be kind of clearly defined. You may need to seek the help of a professional <laughs> for that, um, of what pain-free range of motion is. Like, yeah, yeah, my bone's sticking out of my, my arm, but I'm still moving it. It hurts, but, you know. So you kind of have to find what realistically uh, pain-free uh, 
pain-free movement is that you can do and do that as often as possible. I think at the end of the day, you guys know. You guys know what's, <laughs> what's like borderline. I'm just being lazy and I'm not doing anything and, and where you are in pain and you are injured. But I will, to your point, say that, you know, for example, those of you who've been watching, we've been doing this little gymnastics course. We've been doing all these extra things with Kung Fu because we're preparing for China. We're preparing for shows. We're going yep. to Knoxville next uh, few weeks from now for a show. So we've been putting our body through a little bit of extra um, intense work workouts and because of that I do I start feeling a little bit of joint uh, pain I feel a little bit of tweaks here and there and in the past what I would do is just like okay I don't want to get injured I need to be super careful so maybe I should just relax and that took a yeah. lot of mind control to try to get me there but I realize now that it's so much more beneficial to do those joint warm-ups that you mm -hmm. discussed a few a couple weeks ago on your live we had you kind of showing a little bit of your class where you're doing those yep. joint mobility and warm-ups um, and those are just so beneficial I realized after just kind of doing that the tweakiness was gone and I wasn't feeling that quote unquote pain. So there's a definitive difference between actually being injured and just going, wow, my joints are a little older. They're a little bit, maybe I didn't warm up as much as I should have. And so with that, you just have to give your body a little bit more attention. And, yeah. um, you know, Oscar's super disciplined because it'll be, you know, late at night after he's done hours of uh, work all day and then had to clean the, the dishes because I don't do the dishes. Um, I do the cooking. The cooking. Way <laughs> more important than dishes. Dishes well, are we down do need, here. We do need clean dishes to cook, <laughs> though. So it go, goes together. We're a good team. Um, but even after that, I'm like, all right, peace out. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> and Oscar's there with his music on and he's doing his his joint mobility and his stretching and I'm just like way to make me feel lazy no well <laughs> let's just okay we're, we're gonna have to wrap this up soon right but let's just <laughs> um, real quick remind people that you've been doing this for a long time uh, the kung fu st stuff your body um, uh, is more used to it and my body is not it doesn't <laughs> agree with it all the time so I need to do a lot of stuff because my goal is to continuously get better and I don't want to be like well now I'm gonna be 40 and um, and I don't move as well as I do I really feel um, and you can you can give me some props if you want here but I feel that I move better now than I did when I was 27 absolutely um, and I feel better um, I don't have as much energy all the time because you know the <laughs> life is kind of that way so I'm trying to this is why recovery is kind of an important topic but I think um, maybe we can both share uh, like a quick recap to, to wrap this up so I'm gonna just take you through what an ideal situation is for me ideally what would happen is let's say uh, tomorrow I have a 9 a.m. class it's a late day actually for me but tomorrow's a 9 a.m. class so I want to get about seven hours of sleep so on my iPhone I set the, that sleep reminder app to kind of ding 45 minutes before bed. So if I want to um, wake up at 7 a.m., then that means that I need to be in bed at midnight, right? So 45 minutes before that, my phone is telling me time to get ready for bed. And in an ideal situation, what that means is I turn off electronics. Usually that doesn't mean I, that means I, I stop looking at, at screens, but I like listening to audiobooks. I start getting ready for bed. Um, every night um, I take a magnesium supplement called Calm. No promo there is just something that I found that it helps. It kind of mm -hmm. literally it's got what it magnesium does. Magnesium, magnesium, and a yeah. bunch of minerals. And, and literally, literally, what that does is it does calm like my muscles and everything down. And it's almost like the light switch goes on. It's like okay, it's time to start getting ready for bed. Shower. I lay down and breathe a little bit, and then I try to go to bed from there. Um, if that works out, then the next day when I wake up, remember that your recovery and your sleep good habit starts when you wake up, not just when you're going to bed. So um, try to get up, get a nice tall glass of water, do the joint mobility workout, and then go outside, get a few minutes of sun, and then make it go to uh, go and work. So um, I don't know, that's just kind of my quick recap on that. Um, we can answer any questions. You know, we're not doctors, we don't play them on TV, but we do have a little bit of experience with trying to remain functional and active as we've gotten older. And that's kind of the purpose of the podcast. So um, anything to add to that? Uh, no, I just, just to, you know, a little bit is um, we did mention the meditation. Oh, meditation. So don't forget that. For sure. yeah. So for me, what would set me up for success is having that 
I noticed that I can't, if I don't do it the first thing in the morning, it just doesn't get done. Um, and so if I don't do my daily meditation right away, then that usually doesn't happen, you know, for the rest of the day. Cause once my, once the ball gets rolling, I am in work mode and I just go. So if you can take whatever it is you need to do, have a cup of tea to yourself. If you don't want to sit there and Lotus and breathe, or if you do like a, a sun salutation or whatever your thing is, or Tai Chi breathing or some bifid sal for those of you who do wall long, just yeah. whatever that five minutes is to kind of set your day joint mobility that's awesome that kind of sets you up it's kind of like the eBay guys so if you're doing the eBay strong and you're starting your stuff your stuff right then it'll set you up to have yeah. do the rest of the form of the exercise correct and then also the sal so at the end of the day if you finish everything with that deep breath and you finish everything and close out and you're good and you're like Oscar where you'll actually do the joint mobility <laughs> or you'll do the breathing um, towards the end of the night for me in all honesty my way of unwinding is just like completely disconnecting from the work stuff and then also if I did have a really rough workout a little bit of a stretch is always really good yeah. um, it looks like a uh, uh, Thank you guys for listening. I've got a bunch of comments here and a lot of people are empathizing with us. So this is good. Yeah. We know you're out there and you are um, working out with us too and doing um, what you love. And just because you're 40 definitely doesn't mean that you shouldn't start or you should stop. I actually think yeah. um, what we said last week is that every decade you should be getting more and more um, active. And we all take my father as our prime example because I mean, yesterday was about 100 degrees here and he's like mulching for six yep. hours in a squat and doing side to sides while doing it. And so... But we complained a little bit when we had to do some Kung Fu. Yeah, because, you know, uh, yeah. yeah, I had to teach some lessons. Our, our student from Germany's here and it was like really hot in the temple. And then I looked out and there's my father you know, out there like he is every day, but it, it was, it was pretty intense, yeah. but that is what it is. He's constantly priming his joints and keeping them active instead of just being stagnant. So I think that's the key. We just keep kind of following his lead yeah. and, and, and hanging on his coattails. And so we just want to encourage everybody to keep it up. And, uh, again, just don't stop, keep going. And, uh, you know, I think that's let us great. know if you need anything. Way to end it. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> he's my, he's my, he's Chad my, said that Grandmaster Chen is his yeah, hero, as hero. he is many yeah, of our heroes, right. I am sure. So um, again, we're here every week, every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please turn on your notifications so that you can remember to log in and laugh at us or whatever it is, or ask yeah. us questions. Or um, Each week we'll have kind of a different subject. So next week, I don't know what's on the slate for next week. I don't know. Week. We'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah, we get but there. we'll even post it. And then you can, if you have any questions, you can kind of send it in and then we'll make sure we address them. So we're here to, you know, hopefully uh, give you guys some good advice and some motivation. So keep it awesome. up. All right. Everyone have Thanks a great evening. Thanks for tuning evening. in. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks. I appreciate the feedback, guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.